everyone, my name is Sarah. I'm a medical student and today I'll be providing you with all the information you need to organise and make the most out of your work experience. I've listed all the resources mentioned in this video in the description box below along with the timestamps. There are two basic types of work experience that applicants can have. The first one is working in a caring or service role. So this can be with people who are ill, disadvantaged or disabled, but it can also include paid employment, especially if you're having to interact with a lot of different people and work in a team. So if you do get an opportunity to babysit, work in a shop or tutor someone in the year below you, do definitely go for it. The second type is direct observation of healthcare. And obviously because of the pandemic this year, you can't get this type of work experience, but universities are very aware of that. And even St. Catherine's College released a statement explaining why they're not expecting you to get this type of experience. So have a read of it if it'll reassure you. Getting this type of experience can either motivate you to want to study medicine or put you off, which are both valuable outcomes. I was thinking about this the other day, when you're applying to medicine or dentistry, you're essentially applying for a job as a dentist or a doctor. It's not like other degrees where your career is not predetermined for you. So essentially it's a huge decision to make at the age of 16 or 17. So for that matter alone, I think getting this type of work experience is crucial to giving you an insight into what the job involves. The hospital or GP can be quite fast paced. And if you haven't been exposed to that environment before, it can be quite difficult to keep up, especially if you don't have someone there to explain what's going on all the time. Virtual work experiences have the plus point of giving you enough time to assimilate everything that you're observing. Through the resources I'm going to share with you, you can still show that you have a realistic understanding of medicine, in particular, the physical, organisational and emotional demands of a medical career. So I'd say take advantage of every opportunity and try to make the most of it. Getting work experience is a requirement of all med schools in the UK and most of them would have wanted you have done this within two years of your application. Being able to demonstrate and reflect on what you've learnt, both about yourself and medicine, is the key thing that they're looking for. They do this in two ways. The first one is um, at the interview. They can ask you a question about your work experience and what you've learnt. And some MMI interviews actually have a whole station dedicated to this. They can ask you to tell them about a time where you handled a difficult situation, for example. And what you can do is give them that example and then link it back to a time where you saw a doctor handle a similar situation. So you're indirectly telling them that you have what it takes to become an excellent doctor. The second way is through your personal statement at some universities will actually check beforehand that you have the relevant work experience so that they know you'll have something to discuss at the interview. They want to see that you've been able to develop some of the characteristics, values and behaviours essential to being a doctor, such as empathy, good communication skills and being able to interact with a variety of people. These values are all listed in the MSc Core Values Guidance, so please do have a read of it. So you might be wondering when you should be doing all of this and most work experience opportunities in the hospital where you're applying through the central system for uh, usually run between April to September which is an excellent time to do it actually because it gives you enough time to reflect on the experience, pick out a few anecdotes that you want to add to your personal statement before you send it off to UCAS. If you're lucky enough to have managed to arrange a work experience through someone you know then it might be a good idea to actually do it during one of your other school breaks such as the February half term or Christmas because then it will leave your summer free to do something else to add to your portfolio or just focus on your UCAT personal statement and your BMAT. At the end of the day, the main goal is to try and get your work experience done before September so it doesn't clash with any of your other deadlines. In terms of virtual work experience opportunities, seeing as they're online, get them done ASAP or if you've booked your UCAT quite soon, then plan to do them later.
There are many online courses at the moment to give students an insight into workings of a hospital, the NHS and its structure, the roles of a doctor and its challenges, and other useful information that students would have otherwise obtained during their work experience in an actual hospital or a GP surgery. Alright, I have a list here on my laptop. And the first one is the Brighton and Sussex Medical School Virtual Work Experience. They've essentially put together an online package covering the different specialties, but the medicine is completely free. And at the end of it, you can get a free certificate of completion. The second one is the King's Fund for the NHS Explained. It's an eight hour module giving you an insight into the NHS its current and future challenges. It's absolutely free, but to get a certificate, you do have to pay. The RCGP Observe GP is a video platform giving you an insight into the role of a GP and the primary healthcare team, which is just as important to learn about as the hospital specialties. Okay, my laptop is becoming way too heavy. Um, all right, the Age UK also have many different opportunities to become a online buddy, campaigner or fundraiser at an Age UK charity. The COVID-19 Mutual Aid is a service connecting people who want to help locals who are more vulnerable or self-isolating. The Silver Line currently have an emergency appeal for volunteers. They're a telephone helpline for their elderly to provide them with information, advice and friendship available 24 hours a day. Okay, these last three are not really work experience, but the NHS Careers website gives you an insight into the different specialties within medicine, informing you about the healthcare team and the different careers that are available within my HE Plus is a University of Cambridge website giving you an insight into medicine and how the course is taught there. And you guys might have already come across this one, but Medical Projects, who are also on YouTube, recently ran a webinar on being an AE doctor during COVID. So that's something else that you can definitely watch and might find useful. And finally, on 25th of July, a couple of other medical students and I will be running a free webinar on sleep as it's a very badly taught topic at medical school. We'll go through the common sleep problems that patients usually present with in primary care and the questions that you should be asking them, the science behind sleep disorders and skin conditions associated with sleep deprivation. We'll also be inviting several scientists, doctors and specialists within the field that can answer your questions. And at the end of the webinar, we'll be hosting a Q&A on med school applications so that you can ask any questions that you might have. You need to reflect before, during and after your placements, whether that's a 10 week long course or a one hour webinar. At medical school, we use the Gibbs reflective cycle for our reflections, which is a good template, but you don't actually have to follow every stage of it if that's too rigid for you. It breaks down the experience into six different sections, starting with a description of what happened and then ending with an action plan for you to follow up with. It's very good in helping you to understand your emotions, what you learned from that experience and what you'd like to know in the future. I've left a Gibbs reflective cycle template in the description box below, which I highly recommend for you to print out and leave in your notebook so that you can always have it there to refer to. I've also provided you with a table that you can use for your reflections so that by the end, you will have created a bank of examples to draw upon at your interview and when writing your personal statements. In general, when reflecting, think about why you're doing that work experience and what you want to gain out of it. This will really help to determine what's worth spending your time on and it'll help you to set goals that you want to achieve. Don't just give them a list of your work experience roles, as I've already mentioned in my personal statement video, which you should go and watch, by the way, if you haven't already done so. To show that you've understood what you've observed, it's very effective to demonstrate to the admissions officers why the doctor needs these qualities in order to provide high quality care. So for example, in my own personal statement, I remember talking about a specific scenario where a patient couldn't be treated and um, I followed that up with moreover showing empathy and active listening are key in alleviating a patient's anxiety 
particularly when there's an absence of a proven medical cure. To add to that, going into specific detail about your role is a very good way of standing out from other candidates and making your answers quite personal. As I mentioned in the example that I gave, expressing compassion and empathy are highly effective and powerful in building trust with the patient, alleviating their anxiety and therefore improving healthcare outcomes. But other things that you can watch out for on your placements or your virtual work experience are a multidisciplinary team, interaction between the healthcare professionals, how they work together and the individual roles within the team. The second one is communication skills. So look at how the doctor is interacting with medical students, their colleagues, the patients. This is one of the most important tools that a doctor has in order to improve patient care and patient satisfaction. The third one is teaching because when we're on placement during our clinical years, most of the information that we learn on the wards or during our teaching sessions is from the doctors just passing on their knowledge. So this is a very important skill to master. Then we have listening skills and this is crucial in taking an accurate patient history. In order to provide individualized and patient-centered care, you need to listen to the concerns of a patient and understand what they're really expecting from the consultation. Leadership skills, problem solving and critical thinking are amongst the many other skills that you might be able to observe. At the end of the day, you just want to demonstrate that you've learned something, you've reflected and you understand why a doctor needs these skills. And this consequently shows that you have a good insight into medicine. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you found it useful, you might want to check out my other videos on personal statement and the UCAT. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me on my Instagram or in the comment section below. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your week.